Is This a Home for Hermit Crab? is a picture book that was first published over 30 years ago. This fresh edition of the classic book features all new illustrations for a new generation of children. Hi, I'm Dan Skinner and welcome to the Kids Bookshelf. Ahead, we'll explore the book and talk with the author about the inspiration behind it. And also, we'll discuss the challenges of writing a picture book. Children's book author Megan McDonald is the award-winning, best-selling author of the Judy Moody series, along with many other middle grade and picture books. She joins us to talk about this new edition of the picture book, Is This a Home for Hermit Crab? Megan, welcome to the Kids Bookshelf. Thank you so much. I'm so happy to be with you. Well, this is over 30 years ago that the original one came out. And before we talk about the new edition of this book, tell us about the inspiration for the first one. Well, this book is so near and dear to me because it was my very first book that I ever got published. And way back in college, when I took a class about writing for children, I had um, used, I had remembered and used a story from my childhood when I had a pet hermit crab. And I kept it in the tank and took care of it and all. But one day it escaped. I don't know how it got out. And I couldn't find it for a couple days. And I was getting very worried. And then I went to put my sneakers on one day and the hermit crab had hidden in my shoe. And I always remembered that because I thought it must have been looking, you know, kind of like a shell. It must have been looking for a home that was dark and cozy. And so um, that little anecdote stayed with me and became a story that I first wrote. And then later, uh, after I was out of college, I became a children's librarian. And I was doing a story time and somebody had given me these wonderful puppets. And one of the puppets was of a hermit crab. <laughs> so I wanted to think of a story to use with the puppets and there weren't, I couldn't find anything about a hermit crab. So I made one up and I went back to that original story and um, I made up a story about a hermit crab walking along the beach looking for a new home. And I added all of these scritch scratch, scritch scratch sounds because I knew I was going to be doing it at story time. And the kids, if it was a refrain and it was repetitive, they could repeat it back to me. So I originally did the story aloud with puppets. And all usually I always put you know, when I was a librarian, I would put the book out that I was, so people could check out the book after story time. And everybody came up to me and they said, where's the book? Why didn't you put the book out today? And it was because I had made the story up and that kind of planted the seed that maybe this could be turned into a picture book. So here we are over 30 years later, and there's a brand new edition of this book. So why did you want to create a new edition? The original edition went out of print just due to some unfortunate circumstances where the publish, different publishers took over and the films got lost along the way to make the book. And I was always so disappointed that the book had gone out of print. So for years, I had wanted to bring it back, but I didn't really even know how to do that. And I've been friends with Catherine Tillotson, the illustrator, for years. And Catherine was a fan of this book. She always loved the story and she was kind of looking for a new project, but she didn't tell me this. So she went ahead and just kind of as an exercise for herself and her illustration, she played around with the, with um, images for the text and she made a dummy, you know, where she sketched out everything for the book. And then she did maybe one or two finished pieces of what she imagined it would look like. But all of this went on for months, unbeknownst to me. I had no idea. And then one day she just said, can I come up and visit you? And she came and presented this wonderful dummy with all these sketches and these beautiful illustrations. And she said, what do you think if we really tried to um, see if we could bring the book back? So. I was just so excited, but she really spearheaded all of this. And 
um, our original editor, Richard Jackson, who had done the book uh, the first time around, had a partner, Neil Porter. And Neil Porter is with Holiday House now at Neil Porter Books. So we immediately thought Neil would know the book and he would probably remember and have some feeling for it. So we approached Neil about would he be interested and Catherine showed the dummy and the finished pieces. And it just happened, Neil said, he couldn't believe when he got the email because it just happened that on that day, he was having a meeting with some of his editors where they present new books and somebody presented a book about a hermit crab. And he said, oh, you should take a look at the classic book on hermit crabs by Megan McDonald. And here he goes back to his desk and he gets this email, would, would he be interested in bringing the book back? So it was just a wonderful collaboration and um, kind of a coming home for me to, uh, to have Catherine be the illustrator and Neil be the editor. And so we, we essentially left the text mostly the same. And then we added a lot of back matter for kids because hermit crabs are so fascinating. We thought it would be fun for kids to be able to read about the actual creatures. Would you read a small portion of the book for us? Sure, I'd love to. So the book is wonderful to read aloud, and there's a scritch scratch sound that if um, parents or teachers are reading, you can get the kids to join in with you. But I'll read from the beginning. Hermit Crab was growing too big for the house on his back. It was time to find a new house. He crawled up out of the water, looking for something to hide in where he would be safe from the porcupine fish. He stepped along the shore by the sea in the sand, scritch, scratch, scritch, scratch, till he came to a rock. Is this a house for hermit crab? It was too heavy. So he stepped along the shore by the sea in the sand, Scritch, scratch, scritch, scratch, until he came to a rusty old tin can. Is this a house for hermit crab? It was too noisy. So he stepped along the shore by the sea in the sand. Scritch, scratch, scritch, scratch. So he tries a number of different things for his home. And then all of a sudden, a gigantic wave tossed and tumbled pebbles and sand over Hermit Crab's head. He swirled and whirled with the tide and was washed back out to sea. Sleeker than a shark, the porcupine fish darted out from its hiding place in the tall seaweed. Mouth open wide, it headed right for Hermit Crab. Hermit Crab raced across the ocean floor. Scritch, 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 scritch. And he finds an empty shell. When all seemed still and quiet, Hermit Crab snuggled comfortably down into his new shell. It was not too heavy, not too noisy, not too dark, and not too deep. It was not too crowded and it did not have too many holes. At last, Hermit Crab had found a new home, and it fit just right. And you uh, sort of bookended it for us there, the beginning and the end <laughs> yes, of the story. Yes. And in between, he tries out these different, uh, you know, shells and holes, and they just don't work in a net, I believe. <laughs> so <Yeah>, yes, <laughs> finally, he finds a home. Yes. And I love the metaphor of this book because um, it's a hermit crab searching for the right thing that will fit, but it's really about finding home, right? And finding um, for any of us the search and the journey and figuring out what is home and who makes up home. So um, it's it's really fun to it's a very simple story and it's really fun to do that with something like a sea creature. And then uh, the, one of the things it's, it's interesting because I would imagine most writers and maybe illustrators look at a book that's finished and published and think, if I had that to do over, here's what I would do differently. Well, in the very, so I got the chance to do this over and in the very first book, um, I have 
elements that are all true to a hermit crab. But the one thing that I did was I made up this fish that would chase the hermit crab and be the predator and threaten the crab for suspense. And so in the first version, I called it the prickle pine fish, but there was no such fish called this. Well, I feel so terrible. I have tormented teachers and parents all over because everybody would then go and they would look up the fish to try to show readers, you know, what this fish looked like. And I would get all these letters saying, we've looked everywhere and we can't find any fish called the prickle pine fish. So I had the opportunity to actually change it to a real fish called the porcupine fish. And one of the things that Catherine as illustrator had talked to me about when she was re-illustrating the book was she, the, in the first version, the fish, fish looked kind of like a largemouth bass, but it didn't really look very scary or intimidating. And Catherine said, I'd really love to play up the suspense. And, you know, so she, she found some of these great photos of a porcupine fish. And here's the illustration for the porcupine fish now, which is just one of my favorites in the book. So it was really great to be able to go back and change it to an actual fish so that kids will be able to find this when they go looking for more information about hermit crabs and the fish. And as you mentioned at the back of the book, you've put a lot of information about hermit crabs and also, uh, you know, sort of resources so they can reach out and learn more if they'd like. Exactly, because they're actually really fascinating. And I learned things that I didn't know. And some of the things I couldn't weave into the book But for example, I didn't realize when hermit crabs go to find a new shell, they line up like in a conga line and they have all these different size shells. And as one moves into the bigger shell, the next one in line moves in and takes that shell. And it's really fascinating. You can, um, they have a series on, I think on PBS called Spy Cam or something. And you can watch video of the hermit crab actually doing this. It's really interesting. I wanted to ask you a question as a children's book author, and in particular about writing a picture book, because I think some people might look at a picture book and say, oh, that's easy. It's a short book. I can just do this. But it's much more complicated than that. So tell us a little bit about the challenges of writing a picture book. It's very deceptive because I think you're absolutely right. Because it's short, people think that's got to be so easy and anybody could do it. And I find, you know, I write a lot of, um, I have a whole chapter book series about a character, Judy Moody, and her little brother, Stink. I write a lot of longer pieces, but I find the picture book in a way more challenging because you have to be so judicious and economical about every the choice you don't have a lot of room so the choice of each word is so critically important and you have to make the few words that you have really count for me this being my first picture book i think it helped me that i kind of developed the story first aloud because um it got the refrain in there. It got me to, there's repetition and there's rhythm. And a lot of people have actually used the Hermit Crab book to teach kids how to read because the words are fairly simple and there's a lot of repetition. But I think one of the most lovely things about picture books are that it it can have a cadence to it, almost poetic in a way. And that you, it's visual storytelling in the sense that you are letting the pictures do a lot of, carry a lot of the load, but uh, those few words just matter so much. I've I've heard it likened to, sort of metaphorically speaking, like writing haiku. You have a small amount of words, but those words have to be evocative and tell a story, and that you have a beginning, a middle, and an end, like a whole novel but in very few words. That's exactly right. When I spoke about the porcupine fish, 
you know, I've got, I've got the hermit crab looking and trying all these different homes, but then that would get a little tedious if that was the whole book. You've got to have, you still have to have suspense. You have to have some kind of antagonist. So that was how I came up with, you know, a predator fish that would chase the crab. And then of course you get to the end and you want to have that kind of that ah moment at the end where you feel like you're home <laughs> and that you've spent some time now with whatever, you know, the book holds and now you can kind of sink into that last moment. So that satisfying ending is, is so important too. And picture books, because they're so visual, there's such a range of what you can do with a picture book. I mean, some are very short, some have no words at all. Some are actually quite long. Um, and I just love the form so much. And this book has been, I've been writing chapter books for many years. So this book has been so wonderful for me because it kind of brings me back to my roots and my first love. Well, this book is, Is This a Home for Hermit Crab? It's by Megan McDonald and illustrated by Katherine Tillotson. Megan, thank you for talking with me today. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. If you'd like to purchase Is This a Home for Hermit Crab, I've placed a link for you in the description below. Well, thank you for watching this edition of the Kids Bookshelf. And if you'd like to see more videos about children's books and their authors, be sure to subscribe, like, and click on the bell to be notified about future programs. And if you're interested in books for young adult and older readers, be sure to check out my Some Books Considered channel. I'm Dan Skinner. Until next time, Keep sharing the gift of reading.